So this gentleman is three months filling his zone five. Um, FCU, FTP, middle ring and little, FTS, little ring, as well as ulnar nerve. Um, the problem with these injuries is that uh, a couple of things. Firstly, they always tend to get stuck down. Uh, open and close, my friend. So you can see he's actually got active pull through on the repair bend. He's got active pull through, bend this one. Um, but you can see here, if I, if I pull it, you can see the scar, how it's tethered to the skin. It gets tethered very easily, and that's usually the FDS that gets tethered. And then the FDS gets stuck to the FDP, which makes the gliding very, very difficult. So this guy's got a fair place and hold. Just hold it there. Fair, it opens up a little bit, but he's got very limited active uh, flexion. Make a fist. Very limited active flexion. So that's the first thing, um, and, and therefore we need a high instance of tenolysis. Uh, following these injuries to really get a good outcome. The other problem is this tendency to obviously claw because of the lack of the ulnar nerve. And when they do the exercises, they don't fully extend. And that's why it's critically important uh, that they must block the MP joints in flexion when they try and extend to get the, the full gliding and not develop an FFD. Make it straight. You can see there you've got full uh, uh, extension of the PRP joints as long as you block the MP joints. Now, now make it straight. Otherwise, he can't make it straight and he's going to rapidly get an FFD. So this guy should go into an early knuckle duster splint um, to make sure that he doesn't develop that. But at some stage, he's got fairly good passive extension, but you can see there's tethering uh, and limited uh, active flexion, also due to the uh, tethering and adhesions. And he'll, he'll do well with a tenolysis, but he'll probably need some sort of anti-claw procedure at some stage because the ulnar nerve won't recover. It never does. In, a, in an adult. Um, worldwide, the most common operation for an anti-claw procedure is the Zancoli using the FDS. But in our patient population, almost always our, our ulnar nerves are from a bad uh, zone five injury, which often takes out the FDSs as well, as in this case. So we couldn't, we wouldn't be able to do a uh, Zancoli lasso. Uh, we might have to do some other procedure, whether it's a Parks or a Riordan. Um, and the most common we use here is make it straight, as long as they're booby assessment, we'll use an, uh, an ECRL uh, multi-tailed uh, intrinsic uh, with using palmaris longus into the lateral bands and the, and the central slip. Um, okay. So this is the same patient a couple of weeks down the line with his knuckle duster splint turnover. You can see how it blocks the MP flexion and therefore allows uh, the extensors to extend the IP joints. Um, so that's Bouvier's maneuver, Bouvier's test. So open up for me nicely, sir, and make a fist, turn over, make a tight fist. So you can see compared to the last time we saw him, uh, this is substantial improvement in end range flexion and it's only two weeks down the line. And open up for me. So that's a knuckle dust splint and this is the result of intensive physiotherapy. You can see there's still tethering there, open and close. Open and close. You can see they're still tethering to the skin and I'm sure you will still require a tenolysis.